Hello, Year 4. It's Friday morning. Well done for another week of hard work. You've all been doing so well. It's been great to see your work. Are we ready to get up and get moving, ready for our maths lesson? So jump to your feet, everybody, and let's copy what I'm doing. Okay, let's reach up. Okay. Nice big smiles on our face, lots of energy. Well done. Okay, spin round. Holding your the lower part of your body still and just pushing at the top. Okay, well done. Do that a few times. Okay, knee, opposite knee to opposite elbow. Nice high kick. Well done. We're feeling nice and alive, full of energy, ready to wake ourselves up. Get those arms right up and then bring them down. Well done. Okay. What I want you to do now is touching your opposite hand to opposite toe and then come up in the middle. Well done. Okay. Do that a couple more times. Brilliant, everybody. Right, what do you want to do now? Some squats. Where you bend your knees, you want to just sit down. You want to sit on. Well done. Excellent. Brilliant. Well done, everybody. Keep going. Right, we're still a little bit of jogging on the spot. Okay. Then you can always punch your knees a bit more energy. Keep yourselves going. Okay, now we'll do some little jumps side to side. And then, once you're in a few jumps, we're going to change it to a hop. Jumping on one leg. Okay. Try and go around into a square on your hop. Now change foot. Hopping round. Okay. Well done. So we're finished with some star jumps. Jumping as high as you can. Well done, everybody. Are we ready to get started? Okay, so if you remember yesterday, I left you with this question. What two whole positive numbers that have a one-digit answer when multiplied and a two-digit answer when added? Okay, what two whole positive numbers have, I'll just take out that word there, a one-digit answer when multiplied and a two-digit answer when added? And the answer is one and nine, okay? So I hope, well done if you got that answer, okay? Good working out if you did. So today we are continuing using our multiplication division. So hopefully by the end of this week, you are experts at those. And we are solving real life problems involving multiplication and division. So I'd like you in your books to write today's date and Walt. Pause the video while you spend a bit of time making it beautifully neat and underlining those. And then uh, start again when we're ready to start. Right, for our starter, there is nothing to print off. You can write in your books, but you've got some numbers at the side and I would like you to write down the factors of these numbers. Remember, the factors are the numbers that go into that number. So if you count on in that number, okay, will you reach it? So if you could say one and check with one, does two, if you count on in twos, will you get to that number and so on. So I suggest you pause the video, write down the numbers and write down all the factors for each of those numbers, then we'll go through the answers. Okay, so for 20, let's do it systematically, let's do it in order. We know that one always is a factor. One, if I count on in ones, I will reach 20. Two, it's an even number, so I know that two is a factor of 20. Three, it's three in the, uh, when I count on in threes, do I get to 20? Is 20 in the three times table? No, it's not. But we know that four is because four, lots of five makes 20. So four and five are also factors. What about six? No. Seven? No. Eight? No. Nine? No. 10? Yes, because half of 20 is 10. And of course, we've got 20 itself. Well done if you got those. Right, thinking about 27. We know that one is a factor and we know that 27 will be a factor. What are the other two numbers that uh, when we count on those numbers that we get to 27? Well done, if you spotted it was three and nine. So for 12, we know that one and 12 are factors. Okay, 
We know that two is going to be, because 12 divided by two is six, or if we count on in twos, we will reach 12. We also know that three is in the 12 times table. Sorry, 12. when you count on in threes, you will get to 12. Sorry, 12 is in the three times table. We know that four is a factor, because when we count on in fours, we reach 12. And there's one more, did we all get six? Quite a lot of factors for 12. Now 15, we've got one and 15. And what are the other two factors? Another, we could have a factor pair here. Well done if you spotted, it was three and five. And finally, 11, it's only two factors of 11. It's one and 11, okay. We'll talk, that, that's a special number, that's a prime number. And we'll talk more about those another time. Okay, so today they're going to have a series of word problems that we're going to try and work through. As always with word problems, we use our rucksack where we read the question. So let's do that first. A mother gives her four children 23 pounds 67 each. How much money do they have in total? So we've got to understand the question. Okay, so we read it. Sometimes it's helpful to underline the key bits. So I think the fact there's four children, they get 23 pounds 67 each, and we want to know how much they have in total. So we now choose our calculation. Show me, I can't see you, but show me, is it a multiplication or is it a division? Well done if you are showing me it is multiplication. We need to do 23 pounds 67 multiplied by four. Now don't be put off by the fact that this is a money problem and so therefore we've got a decimal point in it. You just need to remember when you do your working out that you put the decimal point oops, in the same place. So it's going to go there. If you put that in at the start, you won't forget it. So we do it the same as we've been doing our multiplications. Four times seven is 28. Eight in the ones, exchange the two. Six times four is 24. Add two more, gives us 26. So six in the tens and two over here. Sorry, it's a tenths. Four times three is 12. Add two more is 14. Four and exchange the one. Two times four is eight, add one more is nine. So our answer is, nine, don't forget the pound sign, 94 pounds 68. So if we would go back to our rucksack, we've solved it, we've answered it, and then you would go back and check your answer, just to be sure. Okay, let's have a look at another one. So each one of these questions today is involving real life units of measure, whether that be pounds and pence, milliliters and liters, kilograms and grams. So we are also using those. So I have 3.467 liters of juice. I have eight glasses. How much juice can be poured into each glass? So we've read it. Do we understand it? We've got this much juice, eight glasses, and we want to know how much is poured into each glass. So show me, is it multiplication or is it division? We've got to choose our calculation. Well done if you have selected division. Okay, so we've got to solve it. But before we do, we've got 3.467 litres. And I think because there is a decimal point there, it would be easier for us to work this question out if we change that to millilitres. So thinking back to our work from a few weeks ago, to change litres to millilitres, we need to multiply by a thousand. So you should realise that our number will then become 3,400 and 67 millilitres. Now with that figure, it's much easier to do our bus stop method of division. So we put our eight on the outside and we put our number in the middle, 3,467. Now, if you are not familiar or particularly strong at your eight times table, you can either use your multiplication grid that I, I gave you last um, couple of days ago, or write out your eight times table at the side because that will really help you. So you can see 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, I'll keep going a little bit, 48 and 56. We'll stop there for now. I'll, we may need a bit more, we'll see. So we say eights into three do not go. So put a zero up and we now say eights into 34. How many eights are there in 34? One, two, three, Four, we can't go any higher. How many are, are left over? 32, 33, 34, two. So we put that next to the six. How many eights are there in 26? One, two, three, up to 24. How many left over? 
25, 26, two left over. Eight into 27, eight, 16, 24, it is three. And our remainder from 24 is three. So our answer to the question says, how much juice can be poured into each glass? Each glass can have 433, and remember the unit we're now working in, milliliters. You can ignore the remainder for our answer because our answer wants to know how much juice is going to go into each glass. The remainder will stay in the bottle, okay? So always try and check that you understand what the question is asking. Um, I'm not gonna write it, but it'd be great to write a number sentence where you say each glass will hold 433 milliliters. Okay, let's try another one. A book weighs 456 grams. How much would nine books weigh? So we've read it. Do we understand it? A book is that heavy. And we want to know how much nine books weigh. Is it multiplication or division? Well done, it is multiplication. So we need to do 456 multiplied by nine. Now, because this is in grams, we've got no decimal points to worry about. We're gonna end up with quite a big answer, which we may want to put into kilograms, but we can leave it in grams as well if you'd prefer. So nine times six is 54. And again, if you need to use your multiplication grid, that's fine. Okay, there's, there it is, four in the ones, five into the tens. Five nines or nine times five is 45. Add five more is 50. Zero in there and exchange the five. Nine times four is 36. Add five, that's a five there. Add five more gives us 41. So we put our one in and exchange our four, which gives nothing more to multiply, 4,104 grams. So your answer would be nine books would weigh 4,104 grams. Wonder if anyone can tell me what that is in kilograms. Well done if you've realized it is 4.104 kilograms. Doesn't matter whether you give your answer in grams or kilograms, provided you show which unit you are working in, okay? So always show all of your working, be really clear and systematic. No one is expected to work any of these out in their heads. Right, we'll just have a look at one more. So I have 43 pounds 56 and I share it between three friends. How much money do they each get? So we've read it. We've got this much money, share, that's an important word there, between three friends. So is it multiplication or is it division? Well done if you've said it's division. So we've got that much money in pounds and pence, okay? If I wanted to change it all into pence, I would multiply it by a hundred, okay? or we can just leave it as 43 pounds 56 and just make sure when we do our division, which I'm about to set up now, our bus stop method, that you put that decimal point exactly where it is. So I'm gonna put it in at the start so I don't forget it. Right, how many fours are there in three? One, and there's one left over, which goes there. How many threes are there? Sorry, did I just say how many, how many threes in four is one? How many threes in 13? Three, six, nine, 12. So there are four and one left over, which we put over here. How many threes are there in 15? That goes exactly, there are five. And how many threes are there in six? That goes exactly, which is two. So the answer to how much money does each person get, you would write, each person gets 14 pounds, 52 pence. And notice I am trying to put one digit in each box. Right, so your turn. In the folder today, there are some questions set for each group. They are all labelled hexagons, pentagons, squares, circles. You don't need to print the questions off if you don't want to. You can answer, you can pull them up on your screen and then answer straight into your books. The most important thing you need to do is read the question, understand what you need to do. Are you multiplying? Are you dividing? Hexagons, you've got some two-step problems, so you need to be thinking, what do I need to do first? And then what do I need to do with that answer? OK, and uh, just make sure you are showing all of your working, using your squared paper, setting your work out clearly. If you show your working and set it out clearly, then you will be much less likely to make mistakes. OK, really uh, all the best for today's work. I hope that all makes
brilliant sense to you. You've been doing such a great job with your multiplication division. Keep up the good work. Just be re work really carefully. And um, I will speak to you all again soon. Bye for now.